Whether you've been making games for a while and feel a bit lost, or you're just starting out, I wanna give you five tips today to help you with your solo dev journey. When you first start out making video games by yourself, it can feel quite daunting. There are a lot of things that you need to do personally, whether that's with time management, uh, learning new skills. And I see this a lot, especially on the game dev subreddit of people who have gone through months, if not years of struggle, all because they're given a bit of information or a bit of a pipe dream in terms of what solo game development is. Maybe they, you know, watch documentary and was like, hey, I want to experience that, it looks awesome. Only to realize that it did not work out for them because they didn't have the, the wisdom or the tools to actually, you know, organize themselves. And I hope by making this video, I can save some people from that heartbreak, because let's be honest, if you were doing this to get rich or famous quick, there are much easier ways to do that. Which funnily enough, leads me to my first point, which is don't quit your day job. Unless you're making substantial amount of money, where you can be financially independent and work on your games while also making money, then don't quit your day job. You should not risk your livelihood and your welfare on your next project if you haven't already proven to yourself, I can make a successful game title. If you're still starting out and have not seen the money roll in from your work, I would not risk that. Unless of course you live at home or you live with someone else who is happy to basically sponsor you to do this. Relying on your game that you are working on that currently is not making you money to then make you money once it's finished is a massive risk and it actually causes a lot of stress on you. And quite honestly, it's very likely things will go south and end horribly for you. Having a more steady job or ways in which you can make money and be self-sufficient can actually help you make a better game. And you might be thinking, well, hang on, that job takes away my time and my energy. This is true, but having a steady job can actually do several things for you. Um, it can help with your work-life balance. It gives you a schedule. A lot of solo game developers, like I've seen whenever I go on break and work on my game full time, I'm sleeping in a lot more, I'm staying up a lot later, and my motivation, although at times fluctuates to be really, you know, intense, at times I can also feel very unmotivated. My most productive times, I believe, have been when I've been working part time as well as working on my game. And I had a schedule of, okay, I work kind of like a nine to five on several days, and then I have like a day off in which I want to get all my things done on time. And and because it feels like it's taking time and energy away from my game project, when I actually do get around to sitting down working on my game, you better believe I am being as productive as I can be with the slot of time. Where when you have, for example, two years of whenever you want to work in your game, you can become a little bit slothful, a little bit lazy, or just unmotivated. And having a job at least helps with the thoughts in the back of your head going, okay, at least I still have some sort of consistency and a fallback plan. You know, if this game doesn't sell a million dollars, I will still have a salary for the week ahead. And another thing people really don't consider is, you know, even though you've got these savings to live off of, how much of that is allocated to buying things like software or assets or courses that you might need for stuff or even hiring help for some cases. I know for me personally, music is not my forte. And so paying someone else to make music for me is a much better decision than me trying to do it myself. And by having a job, I actually have some, some petty cash to spend on my game. And so that's my first piece of advice. Don't quit your day job and if you can, have a side hustle or something that's actually making you money that you can then have a structure around and also use some of that money potentially to help your game project. Now this is said in basically every video ever about wanting to accomplish something that's hard to do. Setting goals is extremely important, um, but I think it's also important to make sure that these goals are set by you and that you are following them consistently. If you give yourself the goal of wanting to finish a game project in six months, and so you're going to work on it every two hours a day, if you miss a day, that is okay. Being consistent doesn't mean being perfect. Being consistent means that you're not falling into bad habits. Things will come up, things will occur, you can work around them. 
But the most important thing to do is after three weeks, if you still haven't worked on your project, is either to reevaluate your goals or to look at your habits and think, okay, how can I be more consistent in this goal setting? Maybe you need to reshape those goals or change your environment to better accomplish them. Now, there are a bajillion videos and lectures on goal setting, um, smart goals, especially one of them you haven't checked it out. You should just understand what smart goals are. I'm not gonna go into that in this video because most people can just find that on the internet. But the one thing I do wanna stress is that I don't think you should overshare your goals. Of course, my family and friends know that I'm working on a game and they ask me all the time, hey, when are you gonna be finished? When is it releasing? All this sort of stuff. And whenever you share these goals, scientists have actually proven this, when you tell someone I'm releasing a game uh, next spring, dopamine hits your brain and you go, oh, I've released a game next spring. And then therefore that, that dopamine tease that you usually get is no longer there anymore because you've already told someone and go, wow, spring, that's, oh man, mm, good, good job. You haven't even started the project yet, but you've already got the dopamine hit, which makes it a lot harder than when you're working on the project to get it done by next spring. And so it is important to, I think, share goals with maybe colleagues or loved ones nearby who can keep you accountable for things. Like if you say, okay, I wanna work on my game every single night, if you can share that with them and then they're making you accountable for hey, you're playing video games or watching a movie with me instead of actually, you know, working your project, you should be doing that instead. That's really good to do. But don't scream out to the world, I'm making my dream video game when it hasn't been finished yet because you're gonna, you're not gonna accomplish it. I've found personally that I'm hitting my deadlines a lot better when I share them after I've accomplished them. And I'm not saying you should be secretive or keeping them all, you know, hidden away, but don't overshare and don't boast because it's actually gonna, hurt you and your project. Which now leads me into pacing yourself. You're going to be doing a lot of hard work because that is what game development is, whether you're doing it by yourself or in a group. And the most important thing that you need to do when you're working by yourself is to listen to your body. If you're up at 3 a.m. with bags under your eyes, your hands shaking from the Red Bull you've had, your body's telling you, hey, this isn't good. And you know what, if you keep this up for a year, you're gonna be in bad situations. There have been countless experiences of game developers who have been overworked at businesses and ended up in the ER and now have lifelong health problems because they just weren't listening to their body. In some cases, their bosses weren't listening to them either. But the most important thing for you to do is to listen to your body. And that usually means sleeping, eating properly, and uh, hydration. But do not try to crunch and don't have unhealthy working habits because that's going to burn you out and your project is going to be another unfinished one because you just didn't give yourself healthy working habits. It's also uh, important to have a social life. See your friends and your family, whether that's, you know, talking to them on Discord and playing games. Going outside is important. I like to go to the beach personally, but whether it's, you know, going to the forest, going to the city, going on walks around the park, just getting outside can actually help you so much and here's the thing with with all of this we as humans need social interaction to function just as much as we need uh, food and drink and shelter and sleep going outside having social interactions being active gives you a healthy body and by having a healthy body it means you have a healthy mind which means it's better for you to actually make your game by you staying inside by you not talking with people and by you pitching yourself into this i'm a game developer therefore all i do is make games is actually causing you a lot of damage, both to yourself personally and to your game project. Some of the most successful people that I know in the games industry are ones who have a social life, the ones who actually go out and talk. That doesn't mean they don't hit the grindstone and actually work on their project, but by doing these other things, it actually makes them more effective people. That is why, that is why I have weights at my desk because when I am sitting here for like hours on end, there is no blood flow going towards my head. I need to use these to increase blood flow because it's healthy. When you increase your heart rate, your brain's more active, which then makes you more artistically and logically inclined. And it's the exact same for social interaction as well. Because, and here's something <laughs> developers forget, if you want to publish your game or if you want to show your game at a, a game convention, you need to have social skills to talk to people, to sell them on your ideas, to sell yourself and your skills if you want to get a job. And this is why, you know, my other advice with this whole pacing yourself thing, you know, 
having different interests and hobbies actually makes you a more approachable person. If you have different interests that people can relate to other than just making games, then you can have conversations, you can form connections, which can eventually and hopefully lead you to greater success. In all of this, I know some of you are saying, well, hang on, I want to work on my game, but I also want to go outside, but also I want to, you know, spend time with my family, but also I have this, you know, other thing, you know, all these commitments. This is a lot to take in. How the heck do I find a perfect balance? Here's the thing. There is no such thing as perfect balance. It's very much like a pendulum that swings back and forth and all the way around. It is not perfectly aligned into one thing at all times. It's always being pushed towards a certain direction. And it's your job to look at it and go, okay, I need to spend more time on my game, less time on my game, and trying to strike a more balanced lifestyle. Not a perfect one, but you know, that's all that life is about, trying to balance things. And this is where I wanna head on to my next point about playing by your strengths. First and foremost, please just don't overscope. Um, if you want to make an MMORPG uh, as your first game, good luck. But I would honestly say the best way to work on your project and starting out, obviously is to have a vision where you would like it to be, but not be reliant and know that over time, that vision is going to change. Uh, and start off with the basics, whether that's just having a little capsule and getting it to move with you know, a keyboard or controller. Maybe you do some starter assets, which you know I personally prefer because okay, instead of spending three weeks on a character control I'm happy with, I can just start with that already and then start implementing things like uh, interactions or other gameplay elements. And once you have that base, what you wanna do is you finish a prototype, you want to play test that prototype and get feedback and polish from that feedback. And then you wanna prototype something new again, get feedback from that, polish that feedback, and then cycle through that until eventually you run out of money, you run out of time, or you're like, okay, this is more than complete enough. I can release this now. And to finish off playing by your strengths, uh, get help if you need it. A recent example for this is in my game Coco Loco, where I have a timer in the corner. Uh, it's not an actual timer. What I wanted was uh, a 24 hour clock timer. So you'd start at like 9 a.m. and then finish at 4 or 5 p.m. And there's a lot of maths involved in this. And I am not a math guy, 100% hands down. I am, I am not that. My friend, however, Mitchell is. And so when he came over, we actually worked it out. We talked it out. He actually walked it through with me. And so if you know someone who can help you, asking for their help can actually lift up your work a lot as well. Now, the next thing I would suggest is documenting yourself, whether this is through uh, screen recordings, recording videos like this of you sharing your work, like devlogs and stuff, uh, making TikToks, posting things on Twitter, whatever you want to do. Like the game developer that made the original Prince of Persia actually had a journal and wrote through all the progress, which has now been published into a book. And it's crazy just to see the journey and the information and stuff. Doing things like writing design documents or progress reports is really great to then look back on and see how far you've come. And it's helpful for, for two things. If you do, you know, the more marketing side of things in making videos and sharing progress, that's great for then engaging with the community and actually forming hype around your game. But it can also really help you when things get tough. Because at least for me personally, and I've seen other developers say this too, there will be dark times when you work on your game where you just feel so unmotivated um, and scared and just question everything about yourself. And seeing where you are, it, it's very hard to see, you know, how far you've come without actually looking back and seeing. But when you can actually see where you've come from, uh, it can give you a lot of hope and reassurance. You know, look at my game, how it was in the first few weeks versus how it is now. I've changed engines, I've changed layout, I've you know, change the way that systems work. I've focused more on different design elements that I want. This is the first player model. This is the one that I have now. You know, you can see changes. And I want to finish off with one final thing. And that is remembering the why. If you were here to make money, if that's what you want to do, then I would suggest uh, fail quickly and learn from that. Make very short projects, very quick projects. Mobile games, honestly, are a very quick way to turn around different things and ideas and get feedback on that and basically become a businessman. If you're here for the process, if this is just a hobby thing to you and you know, it's nice if we make money, but really it's just nice downtime to have on the weekend, then remember that. 
and enjoy the process. Don't get so caught up on you feeling bad about yourself. If really, if this isn't your full-time job, if this is something that you just enjoy doing, then realize that you are right now in the middle of this amazing process. You're, you're at the peak point now, right? You're, you're making the game. This is it. Enjoy it. And if you're doing this to, to get a job, then first and foremost, I would say that uh, research what job you want right now and know what job you want going into this. So that can be your primary focus. So that once you've finished whatever project you're working on, you will have a portfolio of things to show potential employers. Focus on your strengths and learn the things that you need to learn to get that role. And if you're doing this to make your dream game, let you finally working your dream game be that fulfillment for you. Other people probably aren't gonna have the same investment you have into this. Even if they love it, they're not the same people who've spent countless hours and days of their lives like yourself working on this project. Just be satisfied in knowing that the thing that was in your mind and your heart is now pixels on a screen. Remembering the why is so important. And if you don't know the why, uh, it's really important to figure that out because that's basically gonna gauge your happiness levels depending on the outcome. Understand why you're making video games, what you want to accomplish, and remember that all the way through the process. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you enjoyed it, potentially check out one of my other videos. Uh, but until then, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.